Hey everyone, Tian Outdoors 9. We're going to take a look at the 5.56 millimeter 77 grain open tip match. This is from Black Hills and is also known as MK262 Mod 1. That is a military designation and that is correct. It is not surplus ammo, it is active duty. This is premium ammunition that is sought out by the military, primarily special forces and also for sniper use, but it is available commercially. This is the packaging, 50 rounds. I paid approximately $54 at a local retailer for that. You might also find it in some white boxes. Those are factory seconds only because of blemishes. You shouldn't have any issues with quality or the muzzle velocity. Speaking of velocity, advertised from Black Hills is 2,750 feet per second. That is from a 20 inch barrel. And that's what I use to chronograph these shots and what we're gonna use for a block test in just a moment. I promise to post some barrier penetration videos and some accuracy test with this as well. But today we're just going for a block shot. That is the Bushmaster Predator 20 inch barrel, one to eight twist. And my 10 shot average from that was 2,692 feet per second. So that's about 2% off of the advertised muzzle velocity. This is also a boat tail bullet and that open tip match or OTM, that hollow cavity at the tip, it is not there to enhance expansion. It is designed for better flight stability by distributing more of the weight toward the base of the bullet. So because of that very key fact, this is exempted by the Hague Convention and can be used by the military and again this is an active duty load. Now something that's going to happen and we'll hopefully see this in just a moment with the clear gel is this is going to tumble in yaw when it hits soft tissue, when it hits that block the cantalore is going to break and we're going to have some fragmentation with the lead. It's also a very accurate load and terminal effectiveness is supposed to be much greater at a greater distance than what we've seen with a couple of other loads here. We have the M193 or XM193556. They're on the far left. That is 55 grains. And then the 62 grain green tip or M855. And then we have the MK262 Mod 1 that we're testing on the far right. But you'll see some research and read various accounts where the MK262 has been much more effective at longer distances, including from carbines or shorter barrels than either of its predecessors. The clear block from clearballistics.com has made the trek 60 miles out here to the woods. This one is 20 inches in length and then seven by seven inches. Today's BB calibration from 10 feet, those four shots average 3.65 inches. I'll be taking the shot a little bit further back than 10 feet with the Bushmaster Predator. I'm gonna be set up at a distance of 100 yards. Just so you know, I deliberately pulled that to the right so it would be closer to the camera. Yeah, my warm-up shots, I was tagging a block of wood, half-inch groups, probably no more than a three-quarter inch at 100 yards and grouping in the center. But this is what happens when you get just a little bit anxious. That's an interesting channel. Looks a little narrow compared to some other 5.56 and 223 loads that I've tested but the penetration is really good. Some of those fragments uh, appear to be coming in at a glance, 14 to 15 inches. What I'm gonna do in this fading light is tear everything down, carry it back to the house, and we're gonna finish up under the lights. Now that I'm back at the house, I've trimmed down the block so we can focus primarily on this channel or cavity. The rest of the block I'll recycle, but I'm going to keep this one, the MK262, should make for a very nice paperweight. So we enter here, just on the left, and it starts to tumble, I'm assuming, or fragmenting at about the five and a quarter, five and a half inch mark. This cavity, starting on the far left side of your screen, running to about the far right, is going to the 11 inch mark. So nearly six inches in length at its widest or highest point. It is two and a half inches there in the center but the average is running about one and a quarter to one and a half inches. But that's still some pretty good area. And then the lead fragments, we had some that exited the block in this area, 
but the lead fragments, I'm catching those anywhere from 11, 12, 13, 14, and a couple that are out to about the 15 and 15 and a half inch mark. And then the biggest piece of that jacket right there in the center is coming in at around 13 and a half inches. Quick perspective looking over the top, and this is going to be a little distorted. I cut the block and then glazed it with the heat gun to give us that glass-like effect on the surface. Top to bottom here, we're looking at approximately three and a quarter inches. You can see we did start to lose some fragments out the side at about the six and a half, seven inch mark, but the greatest majority of this mass is being pushed forward. Most of it stops right there at about 11 inches, but then we have these other fragments that carry on to approximately the 15 and a half inch mark. Here are a couple of still frames from the point of impact. First, you start to see the formation of that temporary cavity where it's very visible. Looks to be about four by nine inches in area. And then the second frame, that cavity is now expanding and includes a large bubble over the top of the block. So, other than active duty use by the U.S. Armed Forces, are there other possible applications for the MK262? Its accuracy potential could be suitable for law enforcement snipers, but I've read that the MK262 is not optimum with regard to barrier penetration. We will try that at some point similar to how I've tested the M193 and M855 green tip. What about hunting? If it's accurate and effective on enemy combatants at a few hundred yards, it could be suitable for anchoring coyotes as opposed to using faster lighter varmint loads. Given its penetration and fragmentation characteristics, MK262 could be very effective in particular for quartering or frontal shots. Home defense? Sounds like a good option. Compared to surplus loads, it doesn't appear to have the same fragmentation patterns of M193 and certainly will not over penetrate like the M855 green tip. Regardless of its utility, I'm thankful that Black Hills Ammunition produces this mil-spec ammo for public consumption. The MK262 is definitely on my purchase list for 5.56mm ammo. Thanks for watching.